How's it going, everybody? I'm glad you're here, and today we're going to be talking about Past Lives, written and directed by Celine Song, and starring Greta Lee, Yu Tiu, and John Magaro. Nora and Hae Sung, two deeply connected childhood friends, are rest apart after Nora's family emigrates from South Korea. 20 years later, they are reunited for one fateful week as they confront notions of love and destiny. So this is going to be a very difficult film for me to talk about because I, it, it was very difficult for me to form words after I left the screening. And, and usually when I'm done seeing a movie, I usually come home and I review it right away while it's still fresh in my mind. But this film hit me so hard that I really couldn't do anything when I got back home. I, I had stuff that I was planning on doing when I got back home last night and I kind of just sat in my room and, and stared at the wall and then turned the lights off and thought about the movie till I fell asleep, which is very strange for me. That's something that hasn't happened in a really long time. And, and I'm still struggling to find ways to be able to talk about this film today. It's still so fresh in my mind. And I think I'm just gonna come right out and say it. This is about as perfect as movies can get. And it might be one of the best movies I've seen in my entire life. And I try my best not to be hyperbolic, especially not with new releases like this. But this film just hit me so hard and on such a deep personal level because it's such a simple story, but it's so relatable. It, it's not even something that everybody goes through, but the feelings that these people go through are something that are universal to everybody. People talk all the time about films like this that are so simple and talk about how the stories are so relatable to everybody. And, 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 it, and it might be relatable to some people, but, but I, don't, I, I don't necessarily like to coin that statement because I feel like there's plenty of people out there that wouldn't be able to relate to the intricacies of this movie because it's about a very specific group of people. But what makes this film so universally relatable is the feelings that these people go through. I believe feelings are a lot more universal than the actual stories. And the feelings of these characters in this film are so raw and so different. They, 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 these kinds of themes aren't explored in films that often. I could see this film being compared a lot to Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy, and, and in particular Before Sunset, because they explore a lot of the same themes. There's a lot of deep conversations in this film about existential topics and, and lots of what-if scenarios, and, and Before Sunset specializes in that too. But th these two films are also wildly different. Celine Song's script for this film is nothing short of miraculous. This film is 106 minutes long, and it covers roughly 25 years of these people's lives pretty much flawlessly. I thought going into this movie that it was going to be primarily present day with a few flashbacks, but it doesn't get to present day until nearly over halfway through the film. And, and everything before that is 24 years ago and then 12 years ago. It takes place in 12 year increments. And I was concerned for a little bit because I was wondering how long we were actually gonna stay on, on the flashback sequences. But by the end of the film, I didn't even notice it because this film does such a beautiful job of making these characters so intimately relatable and, and seen and fully realized within two minutes of screen time that it doesn't really matter what time period you're watching them in, you just want to watch them. I was so moved within five minutes of this film, I was worried how bad it was going to get by the end. And like I said earlier, I mean, it definitely hit me at the end of the film when the credits rolled, very few people actually stood up to leave because everybody just kind of had to collect themselves collectively. But it didn't hit me the hardest until a few hours later, the whole rest of the night, my feelings just kept building and building and building and building because there's so many memories that this film kind of forces you to individually reconcile with. Because when you're watching a film, you're not, at least I hope you're not, and you're trying not to think about circumstances outside of your world. That's what a film is meant to do. But when it's over and it forces you to think about these things, that's when it can hit you the hardest. There's some films that hit you the hardest while you're watching it, and then there's some films that hit you the hardest, like this one, a few hours later. And this is one of those. Because there's, I'm, I'm always concerned that there's memories that I have in my life right now that I'm going to forget about in 50 years. And I'm already concerned that there's memories that I should remember that I already have forgotten about. And there's so many what ifs in everybody's lives. I kinda, it, it kind of reminds me of multiverse movies, if I can even make that dumbass comparison to a movie like this. This film touches on how every single decision you make in your life sets you on a path. And that's a very cliche thing to say, but this film doesn't explore that in a cliche way. It's a lot more intimate than that. I've used that word a lot in this video, but it's true. This is a very small and intimate and warm story. One of the things I loved the most about this film is that there aren't any characters in this movie that are 
bad people. Usually with movies like this, like romantic dramas or, or, or dramedies, however you want to classify this film, I wouldn't call it either of those things, but for the sake of the video, I'll refer to it like that. With movies like this, there's always that one character that's just an unbelievable dick, or, or there's one character that the main character just butts heads with all the time, and there isn't anyone like that in this movie. Everybody gets along and everybody loves each other. It's just life gets in the way sometimes, and that's a really painful thing to think about, but once you've thought about it, it, it comforts you in knowing that everybody goes through it. The performances in this film are outstanding. Everybody is fantastic. Greta Lee is definitely the standout, but Yu Tio is phenomenal. He has to give a lot with facial expressions because when he visits America in the latter half of the film, he obviously doesn't speak English very well, and so he has to rely a lot on facial expressions and maybe one or two word sentences to get his point across. And he does it better than people can in an eight minute monologue in two seconds of a facial expression. It's, it's mind blowing what he's able to do. John Magaro is hilarious in this film. He's not in the movie for very long, but his presence is very much known. All three of these characters are not on screen together at the same time very much, but when they are, it's the most miraculous thing you've ever seen. There's a scene towards the end of this film where the three main characters are talking in a bar, and it's my favorite scene in a film all year. The dialogue is poetically written. It's directed beautifully. The cinematography and editing in this film is, is brilliant. I, I feel like a lot of times when people think of great cinematography, they think of movies like... Blade Runner 2049 because it's a very easy thing to look at and say that looks beautiful because it's so in your face about how beautiful it looks. But this film has very simple looking cinematography, but what sets it apart from standard movies is that Celine Song blocks her scenes with her camera so seamlessly. It's such a yin yang in this film that there's always something else going on in the frame besides these two characters talking. Every shot is interesting. There's almost always something going on in the background that is symbolic of something or thematic of something. There's, there's never a shot in this movie that's just there to get the job done or to show a character's face. There's always something happening in the frame in this film, and, and, it's, and it's gorgeous to look at. The editing, too, is very subtle, but when it wants to show you something and it wants to make you feel a certain way, it can do it with a single cut. There's a single cut towards the end of this movie that's one of the most beautiful, gut-wrenching, heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time cuts I've seen in so long. I don't know how they were able to fit that many emotions in a single cut. I don't know how they were able to fit so many emotions in a single film, let alone a single cut, but I, I couldn't believe that they did it. This film reminds me a lot, too, of Lulu Wang's debut film, The Farewell, because this is Celine Song's debut film as well. And from the opening shot of this film, you can clearly tell you're in the hands of just a master filmmaker. Like, every purpose, every single shot in this film is intricately planned to the point where it, it almost discourages you because you don't think you can ever intricately plan something this well, even though it's such a simple, simple story. And the reason why this reminds me of The Farewell so much, besides the fact that they're debut films from a director that are 100 minutes long distributed by A24 about the Asian American immigrant experience, <laughs> is they explore a lot of the same themes, but in so... In, but in such different ways. The Farewell is a lot more tragic than this film in a lot of ways. And this film is also a lot more tragic than The Farewell in a lot of ways. The Farewell is a lot more hopeful than this film in a lot of ways. And this film is also a lot more hopeful than The Farewell in a lot of ways. These two films go together very well. They both explore the same ideas, but complete opposite ends of the spectrum. And Lulu Wang and Celine Song also direct their films very differently, but they still get their point across in such impactful ways. I hope that there's nothing that I'm forgetting to say about this film in this video, because I could, I could talk about it for hours. I, I think, like I said, it might be one of the best movies I've seen ever, really. And again, I, I really try not to do this with new releases, especially after seeing something for the first time, because stuff almost always degenerates with age. Um, almost always. But I don't think this film is one of those. I think that this is really special, and I think the reactions that it are getting is more than warranted. It's one of those rare films that I think actually exceeds the astronomical hype that it's been getting. And when it expands to a city near you, I implore you to watch it because I think that this could really impact a lot of people's lives in ways that I don't even think Celine Song realizes it's capable of because this film can really do a lot for people. I'm, I, I feel comfortable giving this film a 10 out of 10. I think that it's nothing short of a masterful achievement. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you've seen past lives already, let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. When it expands to a theater near you, I really, really beg you to see it and come back and let me know what you thought. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.